Mr. Hurd. Ms. Williams, um, I want to join my colleagues in thanking you for your service. Uh, we share a personal hero in Dr. Rice, so great minds think alike. Um, did you participate in or overhear any conversations about how potential information collected from the Ukrainians on the Bidens would be used for political gain? No, I did not participate or overhear any conversations along those lines. Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, um, I think all of us would agree that uh, your father made the right move uh, to come here, and we're glad um, that, that he did. Um, you've talked about how part of your responsibilities is developing talking points for your principals. Is that correct? That is correct. President, I'm assuming you also do that for your direct supervisor currently right now, Mr. Morrison. Is that correct? Uh, um, Mr. Morrison has uh, left the position uh, some time ago already, at least three weeks ago. So, so but you do the, you pr prepare talking points for your supervisors. Is that correct? Uh, Typically, uh, frankly, the, at, at that level, they don't really take talking points, um, especially if they have expertise. The talking points are more intended for National Security Advisor, although uh, Ambassador Bolton didn't re really require him to, because of his deep expertise. It's sure. the next level up, the president. But traditionally, uh, I'm just trying to establish that this position is somebody that accurate, creates sorry. talking points for a number of people. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Do they always use them? No. Or is, is President Trump known to stick to a script? I, um, I don't believe so. So is it odd that he didn't use your talking points? No, it is not. In your deposition, if your lawyer wants to follow on, um, it's page 306. Um, you were asked about events during the temporary holds on U.S. assistance to, to Ukraine. This is that 55-day period or so. And you testified that the U.S. administration did not receive any new assurances from Ukraine about anti-corruption efforts and that the facts on the ground did not change before the hold was lifted. Is that, is that accurate in recounting your testimony? That is accurate. When was President Zelensky sworn in? Uh, he was sworn in on, excuse me, May 20th, uh, 2019. And then he had a new parliament, too, elected after he was. Is that correct? He did. And when was that parliament seated? That was, um, that was I'm sorry, July 21st, 2019. Um, they, they, that was when they won, right? They, they weren't properly seated until August. Is that That's right. That's right? when they won and they weren't seated until August. Your boss's boss, um, Ambassador Bolton, traveled to Ukraine in late August, right? August 27, 28. Is that correct? That is correct. Did he take you with you? Did he I, take he you didn't. with him? He didn't. Um, we know from other witnesses that when Ambassador Bolton was there, he met with President Zelensky and his staff, and they talked about how they were visually exhausted because one of the things that President Zelensky did during that time period was change the Ukrainian constitution to remove absolute immunity from RADA deputies, right? They're some of their parliamentarians, um, because that had been the source of raw corruption for, for a number of years. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Were you, were you aware of this important change to Ukrainian law? Of course, yep. Um, and you don't believe that's a significant anti-corruption effort? No, it is, it is significant. It's pretty significant, correct. Um, also, Ambassador Taylor testified that um, President Zelensky, Zelensky, with this new parliament, um, opened Ukraine's high anti-corruption court. Right. This had been an initiative that many folks and the U and our State Department had been, had been um, pushing to happen, and that was established um, in that time frame. It, it, were you aware of this? Yes. Do you think this is a significant anti-corruption? I do. Um, when you talked about, um, you, how many times have you met President Zelensky? I think it was just the one time from the uh, presidential delegation, uh, m multiple engagements, but just the one trip. And that's a one-on-one -on -one meeting? Uh, that was in a bilateral, larger bilateral format. Um, then there was there were a couple of smaller venues. They were all in. Uh, there was never a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but there were a couple of against uh, again touch points. So the bilateral meeting, handshake, meet and greet. Uh, sure. He had a short. So there was a lot of people in the room. Yeah. When when you yes. met with them, yes, but you still advised the Ukrainian president to watch out for the Russians. Yes. And that was that was and that and. Everybody else in the room, I'm assuming um, the national security advisor was there. I believe in this case, um, you had other members of the administration. Was that, uh, were your points pre-approved? Did they know you were gonna bring up those points? 
I, we did have a huddle beforehand, and it's possible I flagged him, but I don't, I don't recall specifically. It's possible that they, um, I didn't. And you counseled the Ukrainian president to stay out of U.S. politics? Correct. Um, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the time I do not have. Gentleman yields back.